Hey guys, RC here, back with Starter's Order 7, a tutorial. This is episode 2. Uh, if you did not see episode 1, that was basically the basic game setup. Understanding your starting screen here, uh, so how to set up and start a game, how to interpret this screen and all the information it gives you. So we're moving on today, we're going to move into auctions and breeding. So the key point that I think you need to understand is you will not be doing any racing in reality for probably two years in game. That could take you 20 minutes to simulate. So don't get hung up on that. And there's a reason for that. If you notice, we only have $170,000. So we don't have much in the way of money. So we've got to do something about that. Well, there's only one way, two ways to make money, betting on races and selling horses. So what we're going to do is we're going to become a breeding outfit for probably two years. And then in the third year, we'll start to look to build up our racing stable. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at auctions first and then breeding. Auctions is basically the buying and selling of horses. Okay, and before we do that, I need to make a couple of changes. So this we learned last episode is our, our farm. I'm going to click on my information, and down here at the bottom, it says rename your stable. Just click on there, and we are going to type in RC, our RCs. I can't put an apostrophe. Racing. It's very slow to accept the input for whatever reason. That's a game thing. Uh, we're going to keep everything on mid-grade currently. And we could hire some help, but until we start training and racing, I don't need help with the paddock and the start. The paddock is where they get saddled and the jockey mounts the horse. And the start is going to the starting gate with them. We don't need that until we actually start racing. So we'd be basically throwing away $476 per year or whatever that is. We're going to hit enter. That locks it in. You see up here it's changed names. And it says we have three of six horses. This is where you can make improvements to your farm. Uh, all the different things that you can do. The big thing if we're going to become a breeding outfit is we need a breeding barn. It's the only way you can have breed horses. Well, you can see it cost $340,000. RC, I don't have that much money. What do we do? Bear with me. All right, let's go to our racing stable. And we could, we could do it here, or we could go back and we could access it here. Doesn't matter. All these tabs are basically the same. So we're going to go to our stable. We have a two-year-old male which is a mare, uh, I'm sorry, a colt, a three-year-old colt, and a four-year-old uh, stallion. I guess, it, I don't know, I'm assuming they become stallions at, at four, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, a gelding is a spayed or neutered horse, so a colt, a male horse that's been neutered, a female horse that's been spayed. Typically, you would do that for a filly if you were doing, if you were, or a mare, if you were racing it, uh, and that's the only reason I don't know. And I don't know that you would ever geld a stallion. I don't know if it affects their ability to run. I think it would affect my ability to run at least short term. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we can see we have three horses uh, and their age, their sex, uh, their career races, career wins or in the money, their career earnings and their current ranking. So one is not rated at all. One is a 49 and one is a 70. Each horse has a track preference and you can work on that in training. Uh, their next race that they're entered in, uh, the green status means they're ready. Amber or red means they are not ready. Amber means they're, they're in transition. So he should be ready short term. If it was red, they'd be injured or not ready. We, we shouldn't see anything in the way of red with the easy training turned on that we did in the setup video. This is where you control whether they're doing galloping, uh, a lead gallop horse, information on the training data for the horse, and to enter them in a race. 
So when we click on a horse, let's look at uh, Bala Music. And this gives you a bar graph. So he's 918 pounds. Uh, he he's, has an average build. He likes a muddy track preferably. So rainy day races wouldn't bother him. Dirt tracks, of course, would be his preference. Normal disposition. So you have normal, excitable, and laid back. Uh, excitable, you know, they're a little more antsy, maybe a little jumpy. Uh, I did hear something that that may make them harder to train and race. And that the guy that I watched the video, at least his opinion was he preferred laid back. So just throwing that out there. I have no idea what the G3 means. No clue. I'm assuming that's a group. So he's currently a group three horse, maybe. That's all I can guess. Group one, I'm assuming, would be your higher level horses that are eligible to race in the Derby, the Preakness, the Belmont, etc. This guy is going to be racing, you know, nag races, you know, out uh, in the backwoods of Texas and Louisiana. And uh, how many wins he has at each group stage. You can look at their past performances. So he ran a six furlong race. Uh, it was his maiden, which again, we learned last episode. First race they run. It was for two-year-olds and he finished third out of seventh and won $12,240. And his form for Bala Music settled towards the rear at the beginning of the race, progressed in, mid, in midfield halfway, stayed on, ran green, improved for run. He opened up at 15 to 2 from, for betting purposes. So we're going to go back. Uh, we can look at their lineage. This is where, so this is Bala Music here. The blue is a boy, pink is a girl. So this is his dad, Bama Pride, and his mom, Fly by White. We can click on there and we can check out those horses. Now, he doesn't have bars because I don't know anything about him. You only have bars on horses you own. Um, but you can look at his races, what when he raced, how he did. So he's finished in the money all three times. And this is a, a good chart. This is his form progression chart. So you remember I said that they typically had 0 to 100 ratings but could get better. So you can see... His first race here, this one right here, he started off at about just around a 70, and that's corresponded that he had a 64 rating. Then he went this long gap between races. This was his second race. The blue is raced. Red is won a race. And green is a flat. Fences, hurdles, etc. So he ran his second race here, finished third. And then ran his third race shortly thereafter. In fact, it was only about a week and a half later. And he won that race. So good turnaround. If you don't have the easy training on, you probably won't be able to run races that quick. He'll need recovery time and to get back into training, to get back into shape. So you wouldn't be able to play every day, you know, race every day or every race. But that's what's going on here. Uh, and we can look at all of his offspring. But this is the dad, remember? And then we can look at the mom. And she doesn't have any form, so she's never raced before, ever. Right? So she's just a breeding mare. All right. We can look at the horse starts. This is, this is a good graph, and I will show you another way to find this because this is something you'll want to look at. This is basically 0 to 100. And so you can see, you know, 50 would be right down the middle. There is a mod over at the forums that, and no mods are on Steam. I did look, all the mods are at the forums, but there is one that puts little, little tick marks in the box. So you can see 25, 50, 75, uh, maybe read it a little bit better or more precise. I'm not worried about it right now, but that's what that is. And, uh, the head lad communication. So the head lad is kind of the guy that helps you out at the farm. Uh, this horse is a little jaded and requires a little more time before racing. So even though he shows that he's ready to race, they're recom you know, your, your assistant basically is recommending, hey, not quite yet. So let's go back to summary. Remember we had the bar graph here and we had the horse stats here. Well, let's go back here. We can click on this blue box and it gives us that same graph. So it pops us there automatically. So we can bounce back and forth there. 
now here are your options, and I don't know what all these do, but your pacifier options. And you can put blinkers on them. Blinkers are the little cups, so they can't see horses around them. Some horses get, get spooked or get nervous when they're in a crowd, so blinkers help kind of keep them from seeing the other horses. Uh, a visor, I don't know what that does. I guess that comes over the eyes and helps keep them focused just on the track and maybe they have ADHD, you know, and they're like, Oh, we're racing. Oh, squirrel, you know, like that. Um, and then a nose band, uh, I guess, which maybe helps keep them on the bit. I don't know. Uh, you can send them out to grass, which basically retires them for the season. Okay. I didn't know what that meant, but if I mouse over, it sends them for the rest of the season. Now, most of these things cannot be undone. Like when you send them to auction, I have not found a way to undo that. So make sure before you click uh, to geld the horse, spay or neuter, and a wind operation. I don't know what that does. So anyway, that's your options there. The retirement options, you can retire them to stud, which is to retire to the breeding barn. If it's a male horse, he becomes a stud horse. If it's a female, she becomes a breeding mare and makes new baby horses. Uh, retire from the game permanently and note cannot be undone and retire into the game pool you can get rid of the horse it'll go back into the game pool and basically anybody can pick it up and you don't get anything so i don't know why you'd ever use that so if we look at this guy he's about a 40 percent potential and he's only about 20 percent developed right now but he doesn't have a huge upside. And remember, we don't really want to race the first two, maybe three years. And he's a male. So we're going to auction him off. We're going to put him out for money. All right. We're going to go back. Now, he's still there, but he's up for auction. Now we're going to look at Seawall, another colt, three years old. And again, I, I could go into all that detail, but right now, this is what I look at. I know I want to either keep these or sell these. So he has really low potential, so I don't really care about keeping him. We're going to auction him off there. Go back. And Cargan is the four-year-old. Now, he's actually won some money. He's been in the money, but we want to raise a lot of money. Now, He's actually in pretty good form. He's, he's a 71 rated horse. He's got good potential. I'm going to put a reserve of 350,000 on him only because he's a better horse. I may not get it and I can re-auction him off with no reserve, but I'm going to put a reserve to make sure I get at least 350. So the way a reserve works at auction is if, if somebody bids $299,000, I keep the horse because he didn't meet my minimum amount. That's what that is. All right, now let's go look at our sales. Now sales happen basically every week, every race day, once every seven days. There are several types. You have post-race, which are blue, and I don't see any in here, but these would be those selling races, right? So if there's a selling race, you could buy a horse after a race and you have to go to the race to see those. You have these weekly auctions. These are just once a week auctions. That's where our horse is at, that we've, they are put into the auction and uh, they will be uh, available. And it, you're going to get, this is this is kind of a, a hodgepodge. You may get a two-year-old. You may get a 19-year-old. You may get a 14-year-old. It may be a male. It may be a female. It, you just don't know what you're going to get. So you may find a gem in these weekly sales. And these happen regularly. A yearling sale only happens about once a, once a month, once a quarter. Uh, these are where one-year-olds are sold. Now, the rule of thumb is a yearling you would buy maybe to get into racing the very next year. Two-year-olds is where you're going to make your money. So if you don't race a yearling and keep them unraced or unproven until they're two, you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to make a lot more. So we want to wait two years to sell horses. Then you have two-year-old sales. These are going to be your expensive horses because they are basically either unproven or proven and they're two-year-old, and they can start racing right away. 
So those are going to be your most expensive and maybe the most upside once you have money. Breeding sales. These are where they're all females and they all are not, they're no longer racing and they're going to go into your breeder barn and that's all they're going to do is breed. And then you have uh, another two-year-old sale in blue. I don't even see that on the chart here, so I don't know. I wonder if that should supposed to be a three-year-old sale, but anyway. All right, so all of our horses are in auction. So what we're going to do is you can go to the race course. We're going to do that when we do the, the last episode, which is going to deal with betting and races. So basically your main button here is either skip, which skips the day and moves to the next day, or save quit. So if we save quit, that will save the game to the save file and then quit to your depth, to the main menu, in which case you could reload the game. But we're going to skip, all right? and see about making some money so keep an eye on our dollar figure 170 and now we have 483,000 all right now let's go into the sales again all right so seawall you can see we're the seller we got two thousand seven hundred and eighty four dollars for him we got three hundred and forty five thousand dollars for the two-year-old but we didn't get any money or they did not meet the re reserve Cargaron. Remember, he's the one we put the 350000 reserve on. So let's go back to him, and we're going to repost him with no reserve. All right, and we're going to skip a day. All right, so we got a little bit. We'll go back into sales, and we got 77000 So, yeah, nobody was going to bid close to three fifty for him. And you can see it's the two-year-old that got the big chunk of change, that's where you're going to make most of your money. All right, so what do we want to do now? Well, we discussed that th this is going to be, the first couple years is going to be breeding. RC, you don't own any horses. You're correct. So let's go to sales. Now, you can only see this screen on days that there are not an auction. If there is an auction, there will be a color dot that appears right here, and that color dot will correspond with the type of sale it is. So I'm going to go to the next weekly sale, but I'm looking for that breeder sale down the road in February. But let's hit the weekly sales. And there we are. You see the yellow dot? That's a weekly sale. So we're going to click on that. And we can see that we have a list of eight horses. They have ratings anywhere from zero all the way up to 95. And there's only one female. So we're going to go ahead and start the sale. And this is how you do it. You click start sale. This is where you choose the horses you want to bid on. Now that female, three years old, she has a reserve of $503,000. I'm not interested. So I don't want to bid on any of these horses. You could buy one and try to flip it. But odds are if it's at auction today, it's going to get the same amount. You're not, you can't buy and sell and make money. At least I don't think you can. It doesn't make sense that you could, but I can't afford that horse. So we're going to go up here and say, if you wanted it, you would click on it right there, right? And you could turn it off. But if you click on it and then you go to auction, it will pop up. Let's go ahead and do an auction so you guys can learn how to do it. Now, I'm not going to bid, but I'll show you how to bid. So we're going to choose the horses that we want to bid on. It can be zero. It can be every single one. Doesn't matter. Again, you can go in and this is how you, you can click on the horse and you can look at her ratings, races. That's you know all the same stuff that we were able to see before. But it's much like the father and mother. We don't have bars, so we can't see anything specific, right? Because we don't know. All right, but we're going to go to the auction. So we picked that one horse. We're going to start the auction. Now, if you didn't pick a horse and you clicked start, you would get a uh, message that would say, uh, you have not selected any horses. Are you sure you want to start the auction? You hit, you hit it again, and it basically skips the auction completely. All right, but we're going to do this one. All right, so we're in the auction, Five, and it goes fast. It's bidding now. So here's my bid. I can raise by a hundred, a thousand, or ten thousand. 
And what I usually do is I wait till I see the bidding slow down or stop for a second, and then I'll pop. Now, if you're if you're talking under ten or twenty thousand, and you can see we've stalled out at six hundred and five thousand, and that's what she sold for. And I didn't have enough money to buy that horse anyway. My goal here is to buy as many cheap, 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 cheap females as I can. All right, no other horses are being bid on because we're not we didn't sign up. The game doesn't make you look at auctions, but that's how you would bid. So, you know, it tells you the lot number, which is the horse, uh, and I, I guess it just cancels immediately. But uh you that's where you can raise the bid uh by $100, by $1,000, by $10,000, and uh that is what you are looking at. And that's where you would bid. And if you win, when you come back here, they will either be in your racing stable or your breeding stable or your yearling stable. All right. So we've moved on to the, the seventh. Let's get to the next auction. There we are. The yellow dot poked up again. So that's going to be a weekly auction. We're going to start the sale. And we do have an eight-year-old female for $500. Now that's the reserve. She has to, you have to bid at least 500. We have a four year old female at 1500, and three, the others are Colts, the 164,000, way too expensive. So we're going to start this auction. And again, I'm trying to get these cheap. All right, so the reserve here is 500. All right, they stalled. I'm going to go to 2900. And you don't want to spend all your money, and there's a reason because you have to buy, you have to rent a male prostitute to get them pregnant. All right. So the next one is a fifteen hundred dollar reserve. I'm gonna go thirty one. I'm, I'm trying to stay at three thousand or less. So he went to thirty three. I'm gonna let it go. And so that one sold to somebody else, and then it does tell us the reserve not met. Uh, that's uh, going down through the other horses. So you can see the two horses sold, three horses sold today. Uh, one sold for two hundred and three thousand. We got ours for twenty nine hundred, and the other one we that we tried to bid on went for thirty three. We could have went up a little more if we wanted. I just had three thousand as an arbitrary number. Now this is not a breeder's auction, so you notice now I have a horse in my racing stable. She's an eight year old female. Potential's not very good. I'm going to retire her to stud. Now, if you have a female in your initial starting group, you can retire her to stud and just go with it. But if she's a pretty decent horse, you might be able to sell her for two or three or four hundred thousand and then buy 20 horses at three grand a pop. So we're going to retire to stud. And now, uh, did I do that? Did I click? Retire to stud. Not possible for this horse. Why not? Maybe it's not my horse yet. We have to skip a day. Let's try that because that doesn't make sense. Okay, that. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, man. Okay. Not paying attention and not knowing. All right. So we said there's a blue icon, a pink icon, and there's this weird looking icon. It's She's pink, but you see it has the, you, you can't really see it, but it has this like little icon kind of over the pink logo. I think that means she's been gelded. So she can't breed. So you know what? We're going to re-auction her off. We've got we've got a seller. So that doesn't do me any good if I can't breed her. All right. Uh let's just go to the sale and see what she raised. So we bought her for 2900. We did sell her for 2983, so we made $83. Um doesn't help us a ton. All right, so let's get to the next auction. In fact, I'm just going to skip to the breeder's auction. It's February 10th. So 
And you can see how fast the days go if nothing's going on. And there's the green dot. So we are here at the breeder's auction. And there's a long, there's a pretty good list. And they're all females. They're all breedable. So if you go to the weekly, make sure you're checking if they're actual females or if they're gelded. That, well, that was something at least to help us learn. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, so don't just be, you know, don't just look at this. You got to look that you can scroll down. So we want to bid on any horse. I don't care what their quality is. We're just looking for cheap. So anything that's 1500 maybe 2000 but these, you know, 4000 10000 for those are too expensive. But we're going to try to buy a handful of horses. All right, so this one's going for 1950. I'm going to pop it. And usually once you get to, you know, what I do is I will look for it to slow down with the bidding and then I'll pop it. If it's a low quality horse like we're bidding on now, I use the $100. If it's in the, you know, 100,000, oh, this one's 48. It's Maven. I wanted to bid on her. She's got a $1,500 reserve and she went for over 4,000. All right, this one has a $500 reserve. So if we can get, get her for under three, I'll be happy. And we're going to get her for $27.50. All right, that's this one. That was uh, Coney Hills. So we've got two more. And it is going through these four horses here. That's what this no reserve, not no, no sale. All right, here's lot 10. We're going to pump it by $100. And we might get this one for $24.50. I have not seen, once it goes to going once, I've never seen anybody else, you know, bid that quick. So, all right. And this one's a $1,500 reserve. So we're going to try to get it for under three grand as well. Now you can see when he comes back and counter bids, he does it pretty quick. Once it starts the going once, going twice. So we got a couple of, couple of breed, brooding mares, breeding mares. Uh, we bought three, and we paid a total of $7,850. So uh, we have the weekly uh, weekly sales, I want to, but we want to get into breeding now. So basically, I'm going to repeat this and buy as many horses as I can, but I also want to show you how to get them pregnant and go into breeding. So... You saw the last horse, the one that the one that was gelded, it went into our racing stable. If you buy any other horse that's not at a breeding event, a breeding auction, they will go there. And then you have the option to move them to, to retire them to stud unless they're, you know, she can't go to stud because she couldn't have babies because she had been gelded. But you can see these all went directly to our breeding barn. Now we have to buy one, which we forgot. And RC you should have remembered. So we're going to go to our barn, and we are going to buy the breeding barn for three hundred and forty thousand. Now I'm on normal mode. That's why we started with three horses and one hundred and forty thousand dollars. If you start on easy, you start with five horses and like three hundred and forty thousand dollars. So you start with more money. I think upgrades are cheaper. Uh, let's see the. Yeah, the, see, I think the Gardner's only like $146. The, uh, the Gallup rails are like $1,900. So I'm, I'm not going to buy those things now. Those are things that will spruce up. And we will buy these things later. But I don't need them now. I just need the breeding barn. All right, so let's go back to our main screen. Go to our breeding barn. And there's our four lovely horses. So we have an eight, two eight-year-olds, a nine-year-old, and a 12-year-old. I have no idea what the life expectancy of a horse is. I don't know if they can have babies until they pass away. No idea. So, but that, you know, I know that 12 year olds can have babies. So how do we breed? Well, here's our horses. And if you have more that fills this up, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll down. Uh, you also have your breeding stallions. These are ones, if you have a really good horse that you retire from racing, that goes out to stud. And so what, what you do is you have your breeding horses. You buy a male horse prostitute uh, to come have sex with your horse and get it pregnant. That's what breeding is. Um, if you're 
underage, ask your parents. I apologize. Uh, but these are all the horses internationally that are available to breed with, with your horses. Now, as years go by, these horses will continue racing and they will get more expensive. So right now this is sorted by fees. You can sort by any one of these. I don't know what the F code means. The icons here mean they have won money uh, in their group stages. Um, and so you, you want to try, you know, it's, it's a DNA. You know, if you have, if you take good stock and good stock, they'll make a good stock baby. If you take big fat slobs and you know, they're going to probably have a less athletic baby. So, you know, that's kind of what you have to look at. Now you can see their breeding status. So some of these horses are already hired. It takes about a week for them to get pregnant or have a non-productive coupling. Uh, then they'll come back and they'll be available to hire again. And whether you get them pregnant in January, February, September, October 31st, they're going to have their baby January 1st. Doesn't matter. Don't ask me why. I, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense uh, realistically, but any horse that's pregnant in this year will have their baby on January 1st. So we can buy these horses today. We can buy another broodmare in uh, October 19th and have her go to get pregnant. And she'll they'll all five have the baby January 1st. It's just how the game works. Uh, so what we want to look at, what's important here is the cost. So to hire this horse, you'd have to pay $225,760 for, for him to come breed with your uh, breeding mare. We can't afford that because not only do we are we're spending money here, but we also need to try to buy some more horses if we can. And we also need to pay our maintenance and upkeep costs on our farm, which that's going to go down every day or every week. So what we would like to do is this is what I did is I sort by group wins. So you can see this horse minus boy is six years old. He has five career wins, and all of them have been in group one, which that's what you want. You want horses that, remember, group one is your Kentucky Derbies, Preakness's, Belmont's, your top tier racing. So those are your best horses with tier one wins or group one wins. Then you, want, then you can look at your group two wins, and lastly, group three wins. But So we're going to start here, and we're just going to go down until we find... Oh, look, a couple of horses for forty-seven sixty. So let's take our best horse. We're going to sort by rating. So Alan Jane, Alien Jane is our best one. We're going <coughs> to... <coughs> Sorry about that. We are going to click on this S, and it has selected Alien Jane. Then we want to come down to that forty-seven sixty horse. All right, so none of the group ones are under 28,000. So we're going to come down and look at our group two, and that's where this 4760 has one win out of two races. So we're going to hire that one, and then we're going to confirm it. So now it says she's with Jono. They're having sex now. Then we're going to go to Sharifa, and we're going to now. If we want Jono to mate with all four of our horses, we just have to wait for him to finish and then go rehire him. But let's see if we can fi find somebody else. So here, oh, he's with Eric. And now we're outside. So we're going to cancel that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to skip. So we're going to keep an eye on Alien Jane there. And we're going to wait for Jono to disappear. All right, so Jono has gotten her pregnant. She's in full. All right, so now we've got Sharifa there. We're going to come back down. Oh, we have to go one more day because he's got to go home. And then we've got to come down, and we're going to look for these real cheap ones again. And there's Jono once again. And I'm looking at this one, but he's with Painted Tail. So we're going to want to kind of keep an eye on that. We've got to confirm it. So Jono's now traveling. We're going to skip, but I want to look at, who was it? Painted Tail. So I want to skip, but I want to keep an eye on that one. And he has already gone from 
painted tail to midpoint. So he's in demand. <laughs> he is in demand. Uh, and again, we're just trying to find anybody. Now this one, he has a third place finish. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take my lower horse. And we're going to go with this one. And then I'm going to take this other horse that's a 35. And we're going to go with the other 42 down here with a third place finish. Just to get them all in full. So we're going to skip ahead. All right, Jono's gotten Sharifa pregnant. Ray, and then the other two just got pregnant that day. Remember, you have to go one extra day to get them back to their barn to where you can hire them again. We don't have any other horses, so what do we want to do? Let's go to sales. The next breeder sale is March 23rd, so we're going to get to that date. And here we are. So let's go see if we can buy some more horses today. All right, we've got a $1,000 horse. We've got a 4000 There's a 1000 Another thousand, a fifteen hundred, a couple, ooh, a couple of thousands. Good. So we might be able to get quite a few. Keeping in mind, it's about four, four to five grand for each breeding. So we're gonna have to keep that. Plus, keep, you can go into negatives, but we're not gonna be selling horses for. Well, we may sell some yearlings just to raise some money. All right, and I did not bid. I don't think. Oh, you know what it is? Because they're going down from the top. So we're in lot. Okay, there we go. I may not have been paying attention. I may have lost some of my horses. That sucks. All right, this has the reserve of a thousand. So we're going a little high. All right, this is green eyes. So yeah, I missed one of my horses. I missed the first horse. Nobody bid on it. That sucks. All right, so we're bidding on this one. This has a $1,000 reserve. Don't click it too fast. You end up bidding against yourself sometimes. All right, we bought that one. All right, the next one is here. All right, that's gone over my price range, so I'm going to let that one go. It's almost five grand. I'm going to let it go. Uh, this was Cobbler's Queen. So we've got two more to try to get. Again, I'm watching the bidding, and I was too busy talking to you guys, so it's your fault that I missed it. But that's okay. I'll take the heat. All right, there we go. We should get this one for $34.50. And the next one that comes up is Forever Bond. And we might get this one for two grand. And this is the last one in the lot. So that'll be good. Sold. So, yeah, we lost Cobbler's Queen. She went for $48.50. We bought the other ones. All right. So we want to get out of here, go back to our breeding barn, right? Now we have all these other ones. So I'm going to sort by rating just to see how good they are. So actually, these are all better than the three of the four that we bought last time. So that's actually good, meaning we got a little bit better horses. So we want Forever Bond. We're going to breed her. So remember to select and regroup by rating because if they've run races, that could change that. All right, uh, we're going to get Jono to come in again. And then the next horse. All right, so Ben Ryan is gone. Raven's Bill. Sam's Pride is 34. All right, and do I want... See, these horses haven't won anything. So you're taking gambles with these, but that's why they're so cheap. You know, once they start winning, they become much more expensive. So we're going to get these pregnant. All right, they're all in full. We're going to go the one extra day. And, you know, you could just keep tabs on this because, you know, again, all right, see, Jono's already with somebody else. 
Yeah, so we're going to have to skip ahead. Uh, I want to look at Jono. All right, so Jono's back out now. So we're going to go ahead and get him with that horse. And this one, is there anybody? Oh, Ben Ryan has actually come available, so we'll get him in there. And then what you want to do, I guess, is you want to keep track on what type of foal that they generate. If it looks like a good one, get those horses to rebreed or use that same stud with with all of your other horses or you know whatever. Um, you know, especially as you can afford them, right? So we're gonna skip ahead. All right, all of our horses are now in foal. <coughs> We've got 105,000. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move ahead to a couple of years from now, I guess, uh, where we're going to put horses up for auction and then we'll start racing because we need to generate horses that will be able to race. So when I come back, it'll be with this same save, but I'll probably own a lot more horses and have a lot of yearlings and uh, racing and may maybe into our racing stable. Uh, once you actually have colts, there's a new tab that'll appear here called yearlings. And then that's when they're born uh, and one year old. When they become two years old, they move to your racing stable. So look for that when we come back. Guys, hit that like button. I hope this is helping you out a little bit. And we'll see you next episode. We'll probably still be dealing with some breeding and auctions a little bit. But we'll also be looking at hopefully racing and betting at that point. But that's all that the uh, auctions are, is going into the different auction types, buying and selling horses. And again, the biggest tip I can give you, once we have these foals, once these foals are born in January 2022, we want to keep them until they're two years old and we don't want to race them. Now, you cannot, they can't have babies until they're two. So if they're low quality females, we may just keep them because they're free, basically. Uh, we may keep them for breeding purposes. And if they're low quality males, we'll ship them out. We're going to be looking for at least semi-decent quality if we want to race them. And we'll talk about that next episode. Guys, have a good one. Take care. Bye.